Are we welcoming you back to In the Box with Willie Ramirez? And hey, we got a, it's this is might even be more than a five minute major. We got the big time. We're going with the big hitters. We have the Associated Press, my colleague, AP writer Stephen Wino with us. Steve, thanks for joining. Anytime, Willie. I wish we were doing this in person in Vegas, but maybe again in, in May or June. Well, yeah, yeah. You, we, we spent some time last June for sure with the Golden Knights' has run. Uh, who knows? We'll talk about that maybe at a later date. But right now, we got some other things to talk about. Let's jump right into it. Some projects that you're working on. Something that's obviously you and I, uh, you know, have talked about personally, and you know that I'm very big on, and that's mental health. Um, you're working on a project that involves the NHLPA and mental health. Tell us about it. Yeah, the NHLPA today unveiled a new mental health program with the Mental Health Commission of Canada that's basically essentially a, a mental health 101 class for players, a voluntary sort of course uh, taught by Jay Harrison, who's a retired defenseman who works for, for the union now, and just basically kind of gives sort of the basics of, of kind of how to understand mental health how to recognize warning signs in yourself, in teammates, in family members. Uh, Blake Wheeler of the New York Rangers, Mikel Backlund of the Calgary Flames, among the roughly 20 players who took part in the pilot program that Marty Walsh talked about at the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto today. And it seems like something that players, at least since the pandemic, have, have become much more kind of aware and cognizant of how important their mental health is in a sport where being mentally and physically tough is, is so important that guys are, are coming to grips. We've seen this with Connor Ingram, with uh, Samuel Gerrard, uh, Oliver Shillington, uh, Spencer Knight, kind of talking about how important this stuff is. And, and now the union is taking a step toward kind of helping players prepare and prevent those kind of issues from, from cropping up. We, we have seen and heard players talk about the importance of the involvement of the league and the teams that the, that the players play for. Do, how vocal or how, excuse me, when Robin Leonard was vocal at the NHL Awards a few years ago, how much did it take it to the next level to actually not just have players saying that we have to look after our own, but someone who was up there being very vulnerable to himself? Yeah, I, th I think it was the start, really, of, of, of maybe a little bit of the culture shifting on this. As we've seen it with Simone Biles and Michael Phelps and Kevin Love, that Robin Leonard was one of the first players to come out and actually be kind of a vocal, as you mentioned, about it and kind of accepting of it. And, and there are a lot of old school hockey people who it's taken a long time to kind of really say, OK, yes, this is something that's important to players. This is something that matters to teams that... 30 years ago, this would have been something that is very much swept under the rug. And now you do have the, the, the Spencer Knights, the Samuel Gerrards, guys coming out talking about their anxiety, depression, uh, OCD sort of issues that Robin Leonard really did open the door uh, to some of these guys coming out and saying it. And, and, and some of that, which a lot of the professionals like to use the word stigma, that, that it's finally starting to come off more in hockey, maybe, and finally more in hockey than, than in some other sports that have been ahead of the curve on this. That project's coming out. Uh, Stephen Winos from the Associated Press joining us, um, working on that uh, today. You know, one final note on that. How much beyond the NHLPA, the upper management, are coaching staffs that you're seeing and hearing that they're directly being involved to making sure that their players are mentally okay? It, it, it's part of the evolution of, of, of coaching staffs and, and, and kind of organizations now that for a while you've had sort of the analytics department of kind of being able to look at the numbers. And now you have a lot of these younger coaches. I've got one in Spencer Carberry in Washington who's very kind of in tune with his players and that sort of thing and kind of knowing when guys need to take a break and, and kind of understanding sort of the why of, of when players are worn down, whether it's a physical thing or a mental thing, that I think a lot of the younger coaches, Spencer Carberry being, being the youngest one, are, are becoming more accepting of that. Because if someone's not mentally right, you know this at really any job, you're not going to perform as, as much as you want. And 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 with all the stakes on the line and, and how much money and, and effort and time is put into an NHL season, to, to kind of start paying attention to this it might be the difference between a team winning a Stanley Cup or winning a playoff round and not down the road. All right, let's turn the let's turn the page here and get to the team that you cover, the Washington Capitals. Hasn't been exactly the best season, two four and two since December twenty third. Um, currently tied for ninth in the Eastern Conference. In come the Seattle Kraken, who opened up their road trip with a huge win in Buffalo. Um, what's going on with the Capitals right now? They're getting TJ Oshie back uh, from an 11 game absence with kind of rec the recurring back injuries that have bothered him throughout his, his NHL career. Uh, Alex Oveshkin's a little banged up. I don't think he's going to play against the Kraken, although he's a, sort of a day, day of game decision there. 
Uh, but the Capitals and, and, and Spencer Carberry has talked about this are, are a very different team than they were even at the start of the year. They've added Ethan Bear as a free agent. Max Pacioretty is back uh, re- nearly a year since tear- re-tearing his right Achilles tendon. So there's been some fresh blood added to this team. But the Capitals, are they've gotten really good goaltending from Charlie Lindgren uh, and more recently from, from Darcy Kemper. They're, they've defended really well. They don't score a whole heck of a lot of goals, which is weird for a team that has done this for a decade with Alex yeah. Ovechkin and Nicholas Backstrom of scoring a lot of goals, but they've gotten strong contributions from guys like Dylan Strome, John Carlson, and Tom Wilson. Their structure has been really good. And as one of the oldest teams in the NHL are still in the mix for a playoff spot as we get to the midway point here. Well, and then they have some young guys coming up. Uh, you're working on something. Uh, tell us about the project you're working on on this prospect. Yeah, and and, and the, the the future of this team is really on display at the World Juniors. Ryan Leonard was the eighth overall pick in the draft last year. Ryan Chesley was their second round pick in 2022. Both played big roles in the United States winning gold at the World Junior Tournament. And so got a chance to speak with Tom Wilson, Dylan Strom, uh, Connor McMichael, Spencer Carberry, and also Ryan Leonard and Ryan Chesley about kind of a, just a little glimpse into, into the Capitals' future that we know Alex Vetchin's not going to be around forever. Uh, he's 38 years old now. He's got two more years left on his contract as he chases Wayne Gretzky's goal record. But you got Ivan Miranchenko and Ryan Leonard and Ryan Chesley and some other sort of younger players coming along to where maybe the days in the post Ovechkin era aren't going to be as dark as we think, I think or thought they were going to be. All right, there it is. Your recap from Washington, D.C. Big hitter coming on today, Stephen Wino. Really appreciate it. He'll be back in the box with me at some point, I'm sure, as the season goes on. We head into the All-Star break and, of course, the home stretch of another exciting NHL playoffs. Stephen, I appreciate you joining us in the box. Anytime, brother.